Hello, this is our winter woodland scene. We're going to attempt to simplify this image. Um, Cobbledale Woodlands, we've got the dog there in the distance. You can put um, a little rabbit or a dog or anything you want in there. And it gives a focus to the image. I've drawn it up in pencil, first of all, and I've tried to simplify as much as possible using the the strongest of the trees. So the strongest, as you hold it away from you, you'll, you'll really get an idea of which are the, the strongest structures. So these three trees are the strongest. And then you'll go further back and, and see the middle middle sized trees here. OK, these these trees and then further into the distance here, you've got some tiny marks and some mid tones. So we're just aiming to simplify a photograph into our own style. So first of all, what I'm going to do is to put in a bit of a wash um, just between the trees here. So we've got the gaps between the trees. I'm going to put that middle ground in. So that represents this section here. So I'm going to create a, a brownie grey. So with my blue, these kind of colours, and then I shall wash that in and then add some deeper tones. I'm working onto dry paper. Sorry for the shadows, there's no natural light now. So, okay, so I'm going to go in here. I'm just doing this really to create a horizon line for myself so I can really start to just make a little bit of um, structure in, in the image really just for my own purposes to make sure that I um, I'm really seeing the shape of the image because it can be a bit confusing when you've got lots of trees and there is a real need to to simplify it and start with your structure basically I'm leaving white gaps because for the most part the white of the paper is going to be the snow now some of you won't like that and will want to put some masking fluid in and that's fine if that's the way you'd like to work what i tend to do is be as careful as i can and then i'll go back with some white paint later on but i just feel that um i feel a bit restricted by the masking fluid i'd like to see how it glows on its own okay so that's my middle section and you're starting to see the shape of the land a little bit more so in the foreground here you haven't got much color at all because these are the this is where the snow is lying but to give an idea of depth, you need to think about the scale of the marks that you're making. So in the distance, the little marks, the marks will be quite small. You might want to use a smaller brush or just be very delicate with your marks. We will be painting over this a little bit more, so it's going to be quite uh, loose. So we've got some what could represent foot, footprints here in the snow. So as you can see, these prints here are getting larger as they're coming towards you. Quite abstract, but that's the the way of making uh, making us look like us feel like we're walking into something that's further away from us. So we're walking towards this darker section of the image down this this path, and so it's leading the eye. I put the dog there because it does add a little bit of focus to the painting. Okay, so. I'm moving fast because uh, this first wash is drying as we go and uh, I don't want to, in some instances I'm going to want to work into this wet so I want to get everything in that I want to first that creates shape and form the land. I'm actually standing up to paint and I think this is quite handy because it gives me a chance to sort of step away 
step a little bit further back from the image with my hand right on the end of the paintbrush. I just feel like if I stand away, it helps me with the the the, the simplification of the image. You, you almost don't want to see too much detail because you've got to make some choices about what's going in, what's staying out. Okay, so getting a nice little bit of shape, it starts to go a bit darker there. That's kind of the edge of the path. I'm sort of dotting between the uh, the browns and the blues there. This will dry lighter. The edges will will dry to hard edges because it's it's on dry paper. Okay, now working upwards. I still want some. I do want some um, colour in the sky, but there's not going to be a lot of it. I'm going to pale down some of this this blue and work upwards. Fade that away. There'll be lots going on here with the branches crossing over it. Kind of dotting in between is giving me a chance to make this area. I can build the colour into this area but I don't want to cover every single bit because some of this is going to be white for snow. It's got my ripple in a light sky. Now I'm going to use a smaller brush and start with making some smaller marks into these to represent this area, this middle area. So that's small to me, this is small, small marks. Okay, so this is the middle ground. So this is foreground, middle ground, background. So scale, so larger marks in the foreground, middle size marks. I'm using this brush. Okay, so that's just going to help you just give a, a feeling of perspective really on it. Um, this is full of sticks here. So I'm just using small marks. And the, just remember that the, what you're putting down, the tone you're putting down, is the spaces in between the branches. So the branches are light because they've got snow on them. So the marks I'm making represent the spaces in between the branches. Okay, it's not going to be exact, it's just representation, but once you understand that that's what you're doing, that might just help you a little bit. So this is going to be quite, quite sort of time consuming, so just, just small marks here. So everything that is that scale, I'll do at the same time. So I'll go from here and I'll come across to here. And then we'll get, our marks making will get smaller and smaller as we go back. So I'm just creating ground really and once I've created lots of texture ground then I'll start working on the um, trees. So I've gone middle range here and I'll keep on working on that as we go along but I'm going to, because I'm getting a bit bored with that, I'm going to go into some of these darker deeper areas because it will it will just give me a sense of the picture. So I'm going to make even smaller marks and darker marks here.
So now we've created this ground, as I call it, this builder of texture and colour and perspective with mark making. Um, now the nice bit where we get to paint the trees in. So when you paint the branches in, just remember you're painting in the underside of the branches with and leaving a, trying to leave a white bit at the top. So you're going to be painting this part of the of the branches in and a white gap, as it were, before you then continue with the next one. And then if you do miss a bit, you can always go back in with some white paint on that, some white gouache. So again, I'm using this series of this. I'm going to use a combination of the same colours. Um, and I'll be bringing in maybe a little bit more rust, rust colours. Um, this kind of rust mixed with the, um, the blues to create uh, brown sort of varying tones of, of brown and then the greens there just to I feel that there's some green in the central section here so that it might be quite nice to put some green in there so I'm going to paint away starting from the closest tree and just work at it Now you can add some pencil if you want to, just to add a bit of definition. And um, so I'm going to show you how to add a little bit of pencil, to add a little bit of um, your fine line pen if you want to, your, your fine liners. And also we'll probably add some white gouache as well. So these are the pencils that I'm using, which are not water soluble pencils they're just ordinary coloured pencils and they um, just need sharpening really to a point because it's a bit irritating when they're not fully sharpened and you can't get a good so you might have to keep resharpening them and I use a knife because it stops this wood from breaking because what will happen is if you use an ordinary sharpener the wood keeps breaking and then it breaks the lead and it's like you go back and back and back and you just waste so much so use a knife to sharpen so i'll do a video now of the finishing off 